Tormund, alongside his fellow wildlings, are present when Mance Raider is executed by Stannis Baratheon for refusing to bend the knee. He is visibly distressed to see his king and longtime friend executed in such a brutal manner, being burned alive at the stake. However, before Mance is burnt, John mercifully shoots him dead with an arrow, an act that Tormund would remember as honorable. With Mance Raider dead, Tormund becomes the new leader of the remnants of the Wildling army. Once Stannis leaves the jurisdiction of the Wildling prisoners to Lord Commander Jon Snow, he suggested that Tormund might be more open to forming the same alliance Mance Raider rejected. Some time later, Jon meets with a chained Tormund to discuss what will happen with the Wildlings next. Jon offers Tormund land south of the Wall for the Wildlings to settle after they have rounded up the surviving free folk north of the Wall in return for their help in defeating the White Walkers when they march on the Wall. Tormund is reluctant at first, and after Jon unchains him, he discloses that most of the remaining free folk who are north of the Wall are at hard home. Jon offers him horses and men to bring them back, yet Tormund states that they will also need ships in order to bring all the Wildlings to Castle Black and that John must accompany them to assure the free folk they will not simply set fire to all the ships and kill them all. John agrees and says he will borrow the ships from Stannis, which he later does, just before Stannis abandons Castle Black and marches on Winterfell. Days later, Tormund alongside Jon Snow, Dolores Ed and other brothers of the Night's Watch, leaves Castle Black for Eastwatch to board the ships that take them to Hardhome. Tormund and Jon, along with other members of the Night's Watch and the free folk, arrive at the wildling town Hardhome to convince the rest of the wildlings to join them in the upcoming war against the White Walkers and their armies of whites. Insisting on never being in a lie with a crow, the Lord of Bones insults Tormund for being at the side of Jon Snow, causing Tormund to beat his former ally to death with his own staff. The wildling elders decide to gather in the town hall to hear Jon, who quickly proposes an alliance between the Free Folk and the Night's Watch in the face of their common enemy, the Undead. Having not seen Mance Raider since he was taken prisoner at the Wall, the Wildlings question his whereabouts. Snow reluctantly informs them that he is dead and that he shot him personally, with an arrow. This angers the group, but as they move in to kill him, Tormund vouches for him, describing how Raider was about to be burned at the stake as a warning from Stannis Baratheon, and how Snow defied Stannis by ending his life quickly instead of humiliating him. Some leaders are convinced, but others begin to leave. A few hours later Tormund is helping the Night's Watch load the boats and John queries how many wildlings have boarded estimating about 5,000 and worried that they are leaving too many behind. Tormund says he's not good at counting but that the wildlings are stubborn however, more will join because, they're running out of food and there's nothing to hunt. A large host of undead whites then storm Hardhome and start breaking through the gate and wall separating a small segment of Hardhome. John and Tormund fight alongside others to give as many people as possible an opportunity to make it to their ships. Ed Tullet, 1-1, and others are trapped inside the town hall, which is set upon by whites and catches fire. In the confusion, the bag of dragon glass weapons is lost. On top of a hill overlooking Hardhome, multiple white walkers mounted on undead horses observe the battle, including the Knight's King. The white walkers deploy another large host of whites, hurling them over the cliffs above Hardhome. John, Ed, Tormund and the remaining defenders flee for their lives. Flanked by one one, who wields a burning log as a club before walking into the sea with them, they manage to get to the last remaining boat and quickly row out to a safe distance. As John and the others look on in horror, the Night's King raises his arms triumphantly. All around him, the slain wildlings rise up as undead whites. Days later, John, Tormund, and the surviving few thousand wildlings from Hardhome, arrive at the wall, presumably in two groups, before the gates of Castle Black and are allowed through by a very reluctant Sir Alice Thorne.